video game ser review. Set sometime near the end of the second season for reasons that will become clear to you when you play it and watch the second season. I'm not going to spoil either. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil the first two seasons in this review. This has you playing as Sidney Bristow, the spy who is on yet another mission. And she's trying to take down a cult. Most of the cast from the series make an appearance, although neither of the regulars from her home life, Francie and Will Tippin. Yeah. It's quite like in the TMNT game where, you know, April and Casey Jones do not appear at all. Anyway, this is a licensed game, so it's rushed. And glitchy. The basic gameplay is like a sort of ripoff of Splinter Cell with some Enter the Matrix martial arts thrown in. The stealth has its moments and some of the gadgets are fine enough. The martial arts, the combat system basically has a blocking function which also enables your counterattack, a fast attack, which tends to mean your hands and arms, and a stronger, slower attack, which tends to mean your legs. Both you and the opponent opponent will throw some fancy moves, like you know, grabbing the other by the neck and slamming their face into something, doing the clothesline move, you know, stuff like that. And you can sort of use your environment to your advantage. Basically you could pick up like broomsticks and you know, other things that are sometimes just lying around, sometimes already being used as a weapon. You can also disarm. You could pick these up and basically just hit with them and they'll gradually break and eventually disappear completely. I don't know, I guess the creative team had just watched that scene in Robin Hood Men in Tights and they thought, okay, why the heck not, that could work. So it doesn't matter a lot if you're carrying a weapon or not. The game really wants you to use the martial arts because the gun system is severely underdone. There's only one gun. Everybody carries this one gun. An MP5 and it does not have a lot of ammo and especially in your hands it's essentially useless. It can take about a full clip to take down a single enemy. They really do not want you to use the MP5. It can be a threat if there are several enemies near you that all have the MP5, but other than that, the guns really don't play a part. Maybe they wanted to go for a similar thing to the show, with not a lot of guns and more martial arts, I would say they should have gone with a pistol instead and then had fewer even have the pistol because it just looks weird when, you know, enemy after enemy, you know, different groups of enemies all have this one gun and the same gun. And it's not even, you know, it's an MP5. It's, you know, what the military or SWAT team might use. It's not like a Kalashnikov or something 
or a Glock. Anyway, the graphics are okay. The game is from, I think, 2004, yes. And for that, they're a little out of date right off the bat. It, for example, doesn't look quite as good as Hitman 2, and that's from like 2001-2002. The voice acting is a bit mixed. There are some actors who do fine when there's a camera in front of them and when there's you know, scenery behind them, other actors to interact with, and when it comes to voice acting, they just plummet. Jennifer Garner is kind of one of them. She really doesn't do that well. No one does exceptionally well, but about half of them are at least passable. And they did get the real cast. You know, for Sid, Marshall, Jack, Dixon, Vaughn, you know, and some I shouldn't mention. The plot is okay. It really doesn't make sense if it's canon because it really goes against some of the stuff that actually happens in the show. And there's at least one thing conspicuously missing from the game that at the time of the show. But anyway, as it is, it's okay, and, you know, it does feel like a, playing a couple of episodes of the show. You know, you, you know, you get to dress up in different... you don't get to choose them, of course, but you do get to, you know, dress up as well as have the spy gear, you know, the black suit that enables her to hide easier, and you break into places including an asylum, a museum, and a couple of other places. You get to do spy missions, you know, photograph stuff, steal stuff, you know, and... You know, you and, and each mission is prefaced with the briefing portion where you're told what's going to happen, you know, what the basic idea is, and Marshall introduces the gadgets. And they do really tend to integrate most of the stuff that's really cool from the show that you'd want to see in a game also, and I'm not going to go into more detail about that. The... The sound and score are fine enough. The score is good. Sound effects and such, again, rushed. The glitches vary from, you know, small graphic glitches, you know, the arm going through the wall and stuff, to kind of really irritating ones. Not a lot of, like, game-ending ones, but excuse me, one of the bigger ones is that I think this was maybe made mainly for the consoles because on the PC there are some problems with it that I'm not sure. The, the One thing is the lock picking feature would probably be a lot more fun with a joystick with you going like this and stuff because with, you know, cursor arrows it's really not challenging at all. And in the menus, you have to hold down escape for a couple of seconds before it registers as, okay, I want to go back to the previous menu. And if you are marking something on that menu that you can activate, it'll think that you're trying to activate it. So, if you've just said, set something to the status you wanted to, and the marker rests on that and you press escape, it's gonna set it back to the other, so yeah. 
And one thing I definitely have to mention is the camera. It really gives you a lot of trouble sometimes. Basically sometimes you just can't turn it. It'll insist on being at the angle it is, even if that angle is not very flattering. Even if that angle really doesn't help you. And just in general, it is not a very good camera. You can kind of move in any direction and turn the camera, but this is the sort of thing that, you know, in a rushed game, either they just, you know, canalize it from somewhere else, like Avatar kind of did from Splinter Cell games, or you try to build it and you don't have enough time and it gets to be kind of shoddy and that's what happened here. At the end of the day, if you really love Alias and you badly want a video game of it, this is fine if you don't mind all the bugs and, and shortcomings and you can find it for cheap price. I got this for, I don't know, not good with currency math in my head, but not very much. <clears throat> so that was my review of Alias the Game. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.